Hey folks, Mr. Justin here with Secret Weapon Miniatures and another Workbench Wednesday. Uh, thank you very much for joining me. It is always a pleasure. Um, yeah, very much look forward to doing Workbench Wednesday, uh, particularly on a week like this one where I get to um, do some product demos that have been long requested. Although now I'm looking to make sure, ah, okay, make sure the microphone's working this week. I know that was a problem last time. Uh, in fact, last time uh, we got rudely interrupted as they were doing cable work in the area and uh, shut us down here. So uh, this time we should be good to go. Internet's been good ever since. Um, so yeah, first let me thank you for tuning in. Like I said, very much a pleasure to have you here with me. If this is your first time uh, joining, please remember to like, subscribe, hit the bells, whistles, all the things you need to do in order to keep up with what's going on here at Secret Weapon Miniatures. Uh, today I am going to be taking some of our uh, brass etch frames and some Juila tires here to have a lot of fun with Gaslands. Um, great game that my family and I are really enjoying together. Um, and of course, uh, wouldn't be me if I didn't get to uh, give you guys some previews. So let's uh, uh, show you. I already showed you what's coming up uh, on the release that I'm actually hitting uh, launch on this week. Um, but here is the start of the 90 by 150 trench or not trench works uh, scrapyard, obviously. Uh, a trench works start, but uh, I didn't like the wall, um, so I'm actually redoing the sandbag wall over here. I'm going to add a little more detail. The oh, and hello, Jess. Thank you for uh, signing in. Always good to have your virtual and uh, real company. Um, but yeah, this is the steel plating. There we go. Da, 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 the start of the 130 trench works. The start of the one bone at a time bone field. One tiny skull at a time. And my two favorites right now uh, the uh, Desert Basin uh, 130 millimeter. And the 90 by 150 Desert Basin. So there we go. But now it is time to show off some gas lancy goodness. So these are um, some ceramic tires from Chewila. Uh, everything they make is a baked ceramic, so of course the tires are as well. I already have. And they make these in two sizes at 187th, truck and car size. We stock both, of course. Here are the car size tires, and here are the truck size tires. Now you're probably thinking, well, Justin, how well does that work? You're not going to want to put them on your cars as replacement tires. They are ceramic, um, which does make them a bit delicate, but as it works, about the right size. The truck tires are about the right size for a hot wheel car tire. And the small ones are what we'd expect from more civilian sized cars at that scale. So they work beautifully and I'm going to see about possibly making um, some armor out of a couple of these, put them on a vehicle and see how that works. Uh, if not, I'm still going to make some terrain. But the other fun thing to play with today, I actually have several things. That I introduced last week, but like I said, we got interrupted. So, let me get my cars out of here. Which one's that? All right. We have three different brass etch frames for die cast vehicles made in cooperation with Industria Mechanica. Hmm. Just flipping on you guys. Look at that.
Well, I may just leave it because the setting isn't jumping out at me. I don't want to burn a lot of time trying to change a setting. Here are the frames, anyhow. We just won't worry about the uh, being able to read the packaging today, I guess. Because it's always got to be something. <laughs> All right, so we have our frame three, which includes the big spiky plow for the front. Set two, which includes the nice truck ladder through here which can be used uh, actually bent around the curvature of a tanker truck if you've got one. And number one, which includes the other plow right here. Uh, that one matches this style and is my favorite because I've added some rods through it. For us here. See the big pink mean machine with its plow. So you can see the three plastic card rods I put right through the holes on this one. Right here. And it goes all the way through the plow this way. So those are the three sets that I'm going to be working with. Of course, I've been at this for a while now already, so <laughs> I happen to have just a few sets. A few frames that I've already uh, popped a few pieces out of. So before I open new product, I'm going to dig through these to see if I can find the pieces I want in here. <coughs> but wait, there's more. I'm also going to <coughs> excuse me, play with some of our copper plate letters. Uh, this includes not just letters, but numbers all the way through here, um, starting at 0 to 9, all the way across. We get a bunch of them and my Roman numerals. But wait, there's yet more. Now I opened them uh, last week. So this week all I have are the empty packages and some talk about, well, after I dig through all of my cars to find them, the rocket launchers. Four, four wonderful rocket launchers. Ah, 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 ah. All right. So the other goodie I have are these rocket launchers that we make. Now these are ostensibly um, for Terminators and that uh, we've actually shaped them so that when they sit on the um, shoulders of a Terminator model from Games Workshop, uh, they have the correct angle, which means they have the wrong angle for going on cars, but that's easy to fix by simply putting them on what would be backward. So that now I can very easily attach rockets to a car just like that. Boom. And I'm going to do some of that today. So I'll use some of our rockets. I'll use some tires. I'm going to use some brass. Um, yeah. It's going to be fun. Now let me find. I always keep right close to the desk a sheet of thin plastic card because it comes in handy a lot um, so I'm just gonna cut out a little section here just like that and I'm gonna get to work playing with some of the tires here. Go 
good little pile of truck tires. Now these are ceramic and there are broken ones in here, but I'm actually glad to see that because I'm going to break a few on my own anyway so that I can you know, set them flush into the ground and that sort of thing. Go ahead and zoom in a bit more again. Let's see if we can get that more in focus for you. And then some of the car tires. They're so cute. So very cute. All right. Uh, so for the moment, all I'm really going to need is some salmon acrylite. Um, hey, Raymond Rich. Good to see you, man. Thank you for tuning in. Always a pleasure to have your company. Let's see. Tire, 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 tire. Let's make some tire walls. Psh, psh, psh. You say, but Justin, you're making these one tire at a time. You're a crazy madman. Yes, I am. top of each one. See what I think I'll do because that's just gonna bleed out. I'm gonna get one of my discarded labels here. Packaging tags. Because these are coated, the sand wax light won't seep through them. So what I'm gonna do Make a little puddle of CA right here. I'm actually going to dip the tires into that. Probably don't want to use my fingers anymore, but I'm going to live dangerously. And then I'm going to go ahead and grab tweezers <laughs> because they're handy. No pun intended. Believe me, I own my puns. things I love about the Juila tires is they're not uniform uh, in size or shape, which given that they're meant for scrap like this is perfect. Well, that tube is empty, which means its cap can go into my spaceship bits box. Those little nozzles make, uh, or caps for the nozzles, these things, make great little bits on larger uh, spaceship models. And it's been too long since I had the pleasure of doing a scratch-built uh, spaceship with foam and all of that, so I'm actually going to be doing one of those in the near future. So I've been saving up all my little bits. Bits and bobs. I was fortunate enough that uh, two of my favorite artists, um, there we go, uh, Mike Dosher, who is a, an incredible concept artist, um, just an incredible artist overall, uh, but one of my favorite, particularly for um, sci-fi, uh, hardline stuff, spaceships, mechs, that sort of thing. I think he's really brilliant and can knock brilliant ideas out in a hurry. Uh, and I had tagged him for an idea on this particular spaceship build I'm doing, and he was kind enough to do some uh, digital ink over the photo of the foam for me to actually give me some ideas. And then I had uh, the other one, uh, particularly when it comes to projects like spaceships, is uh, Jason Eaton, 
a really incredible artist. Um, all the old model making techniques, um, he's keeping them very much alive and building on them uh, as he works on his own Star Wars kits, including some great um, concept pieces. All right, well, that's going to take a while for all the glue to dry, so I'm just going to set that one aside for the moment before we show it off. Let's make a different style wall here. Let's make a tall vertical wall. Which I will need more tires. Right now it's mostly looking like I'm going to use the larger truck tires, but we'll see. I just had glue. It would bite me. Here it is. this from a building perspective I'm gonna do the dippy thing again dip 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 Dipping tires in glue and stacking them. One of the most exciting things you can do with your deck. Wow, and listen to the wind outside. Serious winds blowing through the region today. Which is why I'm glad that we are not a PG&E customer. Wouldn't be having this little conversation right now if I was a PG&E customer. Power in the Sacramento area is cut off for PG&E customers today. At least a bunch of them. I sent out a map. We are not on that map. For we have SMUD. And SMUD actually did its maintenance. Doesn't have a bunch of power lines ready to explode because they're too close to trees or the towers are falling. Not that I'm another Californian grumpy with PG. &E. What are the odds? Alright, 
So I've made my wall, what is that, five high? One, two, three, four, five high. Now I will go across the top, as I did on the other one, by staggering. Some of these have a bit more detail on them, the ring that you would expect for some of those for this top layer. No. Tire just wants to go everywhere. It wants to have adventures. No adventures for this tire. All right, well, now I'm glued to the paper. That's always fun. So I'm going to set this one aside while it dries. And let's see if our other one has had any luck. Boom, there we are. Tire tower. Welcome to Luigi's Casa de la Tires. So what I'll do is hit this with some dirt um, and cyanoacrylate along the bottom uh, and then cut it to shape. Yeah, this one's doing well enough. I can pick it up and move it, so that's good. All right. Well, let me uh, clean up some tires here. I'm not going to use these little tiny car tires. Well, I'll leave them out. Probably going to use them with some armor here in a minute. And I'll leave these out because I may use those as well. But now it's time to play with some of our other goodies. So I'm going to grab one additional, a uh, couple of additional pieces of equipment for working with the brass. Um, you don't need all of them all the time, uh, but I'm going to grab a pair of jeweler's pliers so they're smooth through here when they're not covered in plaster from other projects. And I'm going to grab one of my metal rulers, which I think need to come down a cup, um, because this will also help me bend where I need to. That color is all funky, isn't it? Wow. Well, rather than keep fiddling with things today, since now that's the problem, um, I'm just going to let it go. All right. And then stick my finger in a big puddle of glue from the card, which shouldn't have been over there. It should stay over there. All right. So let me start by getting a card that I'm simply going to modify. Don't have to take it apart, do anything funky to it. Looks ready to go. Like how about this one with a little jet here in the back? That'll do just fine. Just fine, I say, just fine. Yeah, perfect. All right. So I'm going to start by taking a look at the brass frames that I already have. Um, and I know I'm going to do rockets on this car. So I'm going to check out the different rocket designs and see how I feel about them on this particular beast. Do it right there. All right, all right. All right, all right. Lots of little rockets. <laughs> They go pew, pew, pew. Ooh. This one looks like it's getting ready to take flight. <laughs> kind of like it. There's a lot of rockets. 
last but not least, oh my gosh, this one is definitely going to be taking flight. Look at that beast. A chunk. That is intimidating. But my favorite is still closed rocket system. Right there. So I'm going to do that. All right. I'm going to take, these are metal casts, so I'm going to take a quick look for some flash and good widgets on the bottom here to make sure it will attach to my model safely, so cleanly. Um, the other thing I'm going to do is on the section where I'm gluing it, I'm actually going to score that a bit. It's going to help create a stronger bond than if I just did it over the enamel paint that they put on top of the car. So now there's some texture in there for the glue to sit in. So I will put a little drop. sit for a minute. More of a drop. It's too small. All right. Let that dry. I'm going to grab a couple pieces of brass here now. Let's see what I've got. Hey, Stephen. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you very much for joining us. Pleasure to see you again. Do, 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 do. A buzzsaw blade. Let's save a frame. There we are. Gonna need some up armor on those windows, that's for sure. At least the front one. Do I want slats or do I want. Uh, mesh. I don't want the slats. So I'm going to cut out a couple pieces from frame number three. So all I'm doing is finding these little frets. There are little tabs, much like on a model kit. You've got a uh, light that doesn't want to play right. Little tabs that hold it in place. So all I have to do is cut those little tabs. Kapow, kapow. In this case, two on the top, two on the bottom. And that piece falls right out. Easy peasy. only window that I'm going to need one on, so I'm going to start here. Now, another feature of this set is that on one side of the brass, let's see if I can get this to show for you. No. Got no limitations here. There are little divots on the anchor points. There you go. And what you can do is very gently take a pokey tool and poke them right in that little divot. What that's going to do is give you a raised rivet on the other side. So now if I flip it over, I have little bumpy rivets. And I'm going to attach this right here. Bend that bottom part, bend that bottom part, the little tabs. And I will have up armored my car here. So, similar deal as to before, I'm going to put some glue over here. I'm going to dip the little top tabs in it, just the top tabs. I'll get to the bottom tabs later. Get that where I want it and leave it to dry for a minute. So let's check on our first tire wall here. A little bit of glue spillage even with the uh, dipping method. Spot right there where it's raised, there we go. Let me 
Yeah, that'll do just fine as a vehicle blocking tire wall. Okay, our, oops, silly Justin, setting that one to dry. All right, and the second wall, I'll grab a different vehicle this time. Yeah, about a height. That'll give me a good stopping, a uh, good barricade. And it's six tires, they're about the same length as a car, which I like. All right, what else have I got? What else have I got? What else have I got? We've got that brass. We've got this brass. Let's take another piece of brass here. Let's see what we've got to toughen this guy up with some wheel covers. Different stop sign, maybe. Different stop sign. A stop sign has armor, maybe. The bus saw blades. Armored plates. Mm, probably it needs a plow. Or a tiny little milk crate. <laughs> uh, let's see. Yeah, that's a big plow. How about some spikies? You should be frame number one. You have wheel spikies. So these are wheel spikes. You can glue it on and then bend the spikes, or bend the spikes and then glue it on, rather. Um, also covers for the wheels, which I will probably add. But I am looking for two pieces right now. Here we are. And a plow, which is not on this one. Is there a full plow on this one? There is not a full plow on this one. Or that one. That's the wrong frame. So I am going to open one of the frames. Let me make sure here that I don't have... Yep, it's almost like that plow was really popular in this house or something. So I am going to open another frame of this stuff. And that's going to be frame number one. Uh, no, it's not. Yes, it is. No, it's not. It's not. Oh, it is. I just grabbed flame number three. Well, clearly I should go back to bed this morning. Oh, I haven't had any caffeine yet. Bear with me, folks. Well, by the time the show is finished, I should be awake enough to do it. <laughs> All right. Let's open up a set of frame number one. Yarg. Buy nice bags. Check out those bags. Instructions for it. Even that bad boy back. All right. So I am looking for the pieces to my plow. These pieces that I'm cutting out now make up the support structure for that plow. And this is the structure that holds it onto the car.
Voila. Now, one of the things you might notice on these pieces is that they have grooves on them, or lines. See that little line? Let's get the focus. Must have focus. So there's that little line. And these are here on all of these pieces. To give you a fold guide to make it easy to fold so that although I may have tools like my handy dado ruler here I don't always need them because I, what I'm going to do though is take my metal ruler right into that gap and press gently until it makes a nice flat bend. Take my ruler press into that gap and gently bend. So now I have both of my bends on this one. Of course, I can also do it with my finger. I like to have a nice sharp edge though um, to press against, just in case it's a piece that doesn't have really good um, fold guides. Um, it's also the reason I will sometimes use my handy dandy jeweler's pliers is to get in here and line it up with that edge and ooh, schmutz in this one. Doesn't want to close. Same deal, bend. But then I have the nose of this pressed into it. Bend. Bend. Get bent. All right. So I have the option on the um, rack for it, the support structure for it to press these through as raised rivets or leave them as is. And I am actually going to leave them as is. Fold it simply so for now. See, that's glue has dried, the glue has dried. And now I'm gonna start fitting this to the vehicle um, before I bend anything else. And it's gonna work, uh, I like the fit. Top and bottom, reasonably straight, can do it. Now I forgot to scratch up the hood where this is going, and that might come bite me in the butt later, but it'll live a little. My sense of adventure. I'm also gonna get a Q tip and very carefully, very quickly. Wipe off some of that excess. You've got to be quick with a Q-tip because otherwise, obviously, you'll leave uh, little cotton puffs behind. All right, and I'm going to run a little bead right along the bottom here. Tissue. All right, and then take these and get them in here, like so. Good, all right. So the first piece, when I'm working with uh, this particular plow, the first piece I wanna put in there is the double fold piece. And I wanna get that pretty much in the middle. I'm still gonna eyeball it, um, but it's a small piece, so eyeballing it's not particularly challenging. And you wanna get make sure that once you get it on there, it is on there straight. Now I'm using some Acrolyte instead of actually soldering the damn things. And that's just fine. So I've got that one pretty much in the middle. Tiny drop of glue next to it. And the other single fold piece presses right up against that. And this helps space them out properly. Last but not least, the other single fold piece. Actually, last but not least is last week I had some plastic rod over here so that I could put that through here 
this week. I don't know where it is. It's been a week. Let me take a peek. It was a lot more rhyming than I ever intended to do. Box little bits. These are some of the custom components that I've made over the years for making bases with. The box does not like to close or stay closed. All right, one second, folks. I'm just going to duck pretty much right next to me into my uh, plastic bins over there. Like I said, it didn't take long. <laughs> all right. Amazing what happens when you actually get the studio all organized. It's not clean at the moment, but it's organized. So this is uh, 0.75 mil. And I am going to cut some lengths of it. Slightly longer than the file. Three of them. It's a bit of finagling, but not too much. And that's just because I didn't make sure everything was exactly aligned. So that's my fault for being a little lazy. But there we go, it's the first rod. There we go. Second one was much easier. Ta -da. So now we have the rods all the way through. I will take a handy pair of clippers. Clip the ends there. Clip the ends here. And then put a tiny bit of glue on each end. Ta -da. Give that just a second. Come back over to this guy, and since I still need to get that the bottom tabs, I'm actually going to put the glue right on those tabs, right over the top of them. Take my handy Q-tip and bam, bam, press down, and move quickly so that I don't attach cotton swab to my model. Hold that down for a few seconds. A doop 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 doop. A doop 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 doop. Next, man, that went to something outside today.
Next, I can glue the plow onto the front of the car. So now we have an armored windshield, rockets, and plow. No time at all. It took longer mostly because I'm sitting here talking about it while I'm doing other stuff. But that is a gas lance car ready to go. It has uh, forward facing rockets, um, some up armor, and a plow. Easy peasy. Bob's your uncle. Teach a man to fish. Something, something. <laughs> All right. Um, and it's 11. Uh, but believe it or not, that's what I have to show off today. So I'm probably going to wrap up early and get back to making bases. Um, yeah, these are the secret weapon uh, brass etch frames for die-cast vehicles uh, made in cooperation with Industria Mechanica. Uh, if you're not familiar with Michael's work at Industria Mechanica, I highly recommend it. Uh, really great pieces, uh, good quality casts. Um, yeah. Um, actually, one thing I will do is take a look real quick at whether or not I want to put some tires on here as armor. And I feel like the car tires are still a bit too small for this scale. So let's look at the truck tires again. So I could, but I'm not in love with it on this vehicle. Covering the, simply covering the hood and tires. But, yeah, I don't love it. And then I need to make a some tiny rope or wire here to make it look like they were strapped down. So for the moment, I'm going to pass on that. What else have I got? Nope, nothing jumps out. So... I'm going to call it here for today. This is a fun little build. It's vicious and ready to play. Just like that. All right, folks. Well, that's it. As always, happy hobbying. And thank you so much for tuning in. Uh, this is a highlight of the week for me. I really enjoy knowing that folks are out there. And uh, especially with something like this, where I can show off product that uh, folks have been asking to see for a while. Um, yeah, always something to look forward to. Thank you very much. Happy hobbying. If there's something you want to see on a future episode, please leave a comment, send a message, uh, however you need to reach us, please do, uh, so that I can get out there and get you the video you'd like to see. Cheers, and I'll see you next time.